Hey everybody, welcome back to VDMS. So, Tarek and your series on the Mr. FPJ DE10 Nano project, and today we're going to be continuing on with our Turbo Core testing with patch games because pretty much everyone and their uncle asked to see the 60 frame per second Banjo Tui patch running on Mr. FPJ on the Turbo Core. So, that's what we're going to be doing today because it's a fundamentally different and much better experience. Don't forget to find Valve though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But be aware, this is the 60 frame per second patched version of Banjo-Tooie. If you run this stock file, you're not going to be getting these same results. This is basically a fan effort to get more performance out of Banjo-Tooie, and with a Turbo Core, we can eke out even more than that. You will see at some points in time there will be a frame counter in the top left hand corner. I'm going to alternate back and forth because I don't want you just to focus on the number. I want you to focus on the screen cadence and the overall pacing because right off the top if you can't tell already this intro fly through sequence is much smoother than it could ever be on real hardware even with a 60 frame per second patch if you put it on an EverDrive into a Nintendo 64. The animation smoothness here is just off the charts and I will show you in just a moment what sort of frame rates we're actually talking about. So take a look at the top left hand corner now as you watch the footage and you're going to see here we're getting close to 45 to 60 frames per second depending on what's going on screen at once and that is going to be a variable. This is an unlocked frame rate so sometimes you're going to see higher frame rates, sometimes you're going to see lower ones just depending on how much is actually drawing on the screen. As we go into first person mode, you'll see here, if we look up at the sky, we're gonna get a locked 59 to 60 frames per second. If we look down where more is rendering, we're gonna be between the 39 to 59 range. This is going to change the entire game because it is not capped, but you're always going to be getting more frames per second than you ever would out of the stock banjo Tui ROM and out of it if you played it on the stock speed core. This is combining two different efforts, the patch as well as the turbo speed, where you're up clocking all of the chips on the Nintendo 64, and that is how you get the result. We'll see here when we go inside the tunnel, you're going to come down here, and the cutscene is going to start to play, and I've left the frame rate on here for this. This is almost an entirely locked 60 frame per second experience the entire way through. The original game got nowhere near this, and this is how impressive the Turbo Core is with some of these patched up games. You're starting to get instances where a game like Panjo 2 e known in certain spots to be a slideshow, is now becoming a 100% perfectly playable experience. And as the bottles are thrown out, if there's more on screen, there's more animations, you can definitely tell just by the motion of the screen, the camera and the cadence, we are not at 60 frames per second. So we'll go ahead and turn the frame counter back on to show you what we're looking at right here. We're around 30 frames per second, which is still better than it would be doing. But of course, at some points in time, there's three different models running around screen at once, and that is taxing the hardware and what it has to draw at one time. But that would be consistent across the board. Think of a gaming PC. The more intense the scene, the more calls of the GPU, the slower your potential frame rate could be. The Nintendo 64 is no different. As we walk into Jinjo Village here, even without the frame counter on, you can totally tell that the pacing and the overall smoothness of the image is so much better than what would be done on real hardware. I absolutely love Banjo-Tooie. I played it back in the day and fell in love with it as a kid, but from a modern context, if I put my original cartridge into my Nintendo 64, I find it to be too slow to be an enjoyable experience. All of these amazing models, all of the artwork, all of the colors that the developers and artists at Rare picked kind of get lost behind that slideshow frame rate in spots. Now with the Turbo Court and the 60 frame per second patch, all of that is back and this is such a great playable experience, you don't need a modern version of the game to really enjoy it. But let's scroll back to that section we just ran through because you can see the screen cadence changing and this is what the frame rate was. We're down around 30 frames per second but as we run up the hill we're getting into that mid 40s to high 50s range. And the next scene which is an interactive cutscene you're going to see that I'm going to leave the frame counter on the entire time. And go ahead and listen to the audio quality because it is amazing. I'll be back in 45 seconds or so. Oh, 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 oh,
we hovered there between a high 30 frames per second to a lock 60 depending on what the camera was looking at. And if you're wondering why I'm not comparing this to the non-turbo, non-patched version, I don't want you to think of this so much as a comparison. I want you to think of it, for lack of a better terms, as a vibe check. How do you feel when you're watching the footage? Can you see the smoothness? Can you see the overall uptick and improvement in how Banjo 2e runs? That's what I'm really here to talk about. How much better this core and this patch make the game feel and play. Not a numerical value, even though I do show you those so you have some context. Because honestly, the number doesn't matter to me, it's what it feels like. Because all of retro gaming is just trying to recapture nostalgia and a feeling, and it doesn't really matter what a numerical value will tell you if you like or don't like the image. But this one area in the game I find to be one of the prettiest and having some of the visual effects that really make this feel like an early GameCube title. As we walk around the gigantic puzzle piece, get the feeling, and now I'll turn the frame counter on. You're going to see we're between 31 to about 58 to 60 frames per second. It jumps up to 60 there for just a moment. And to give you an example of what I mean about things drawing on the screen, if we go into first person mode and look at the ceiling, there's still polys on the screen, there's still effects, we're at a lock 60. If we look down at the ground, those reflections do not make that frame rate dip whatsoever. Even over here, it's a 60 frame per second lock. It's only the puzzle piece in the middle that seems to dip the frame rate down, because every time we pan the camera over to it, it's going to drop to 50 to 51 frames per second. Every time we take the camera away from it and get it off screen, it goes back to a lock 60. Now with this cutscene here, you're going to see we're at 30 frames per second minimum, and that would definitely be an area in the original game where you would not have the exact same frame rate. And even this fly through here, even though we dip down to the low 20s to start, it is just such a fundamentally better feeling image than anything else I've ever seen out of this game. And I do think this, just like Perfect Dark, Turok 2, and Turok 3, gets promoted to a very playable status, where I personally would say Banjo-Tooie on real hardware, I no longer consider to be a fun time because of the frame rate. You can definitely disagree down in the comments below. Just remember, I'm not trying to convince you to think the way I think. I'm just telling you my personal opinion. And it's not a knock at the game whatsoever. I think Banjo-Tooie is one of the best platformers of all time. As we move into this next section here, again with the frame counter off, just pay attention to the camera movements. That's where you see a lot of the smoothness come in. As the camera pans, it's got a fluidity and a sense of motion that a higher frame rate just kind of smooths out. It feels more like a very cinematic pan than something that's a little bit jerky. Think of it like a tripod head, a good one that's properly lubricated versus a cheap one that does not have anything but friction in it. And that is where these things kind of lie. And let's scroll back just a little bit in a moment. And you can see me run through that same section with the frame counter on. So you know the type of frames that we were actually talking about when we were going through there. You'll see we start at a lock 30 frames per second. And that is going to be pretty consistent. You'll see here that there's a lot on screen at once. A lot of different objects. A lot of different models. But that's still better than the original game could ever muster. You'd be more into like the high teens to low 20s there. In some scenes, you're going to be getting maybe an extra 4 to 6 frames per second. In other scenes, you're going to be getting almost 30 extra frames per second. It definitely fluctuates, but you're always getting more with the Turbo Core and with the 60 frame per second patch. And let's take a look at one more cutscene before we go back to a little bit more gameplay. And again, I know the numbers on the screen, but try to focus on how the objects move throughout that actual letterbox frame right there. It has just a pacing to it that makes it feel like it is more of a GameCube game than it is a Nintendo 64 game. Obviously, the model geometry, the textures and effects are Nintendo 64, but it's running at a speed that feels more like it was just a early GameCube game that didn't modernize its graphics before it got onto that system. I'm going to give you one more taste of soundtrack and voiceover because a lot of people keep asking if the turbo chord changes the speed or the pitch of the music. I'm not sure where that rumor got started, but I can tell you it's exactly as you would expect. 25 seconds, I'll be back with more fast footage. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
Sounds exactly like it should, and I'll explain that in just a moment, but watch as Banjo runs up the stairs here. You can see that this is basically 60 frames per second. It is so smooth that the minute we get to the top of the stairs and those light beams come in, you can feel that the frame rate drops a little bit, and we'll get to that data in just a moment. But as far as the music is concerned, people seem to think that it might speed up because some games tie their in-engine speed to the frame rate. So if your goes from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second, that would double the speed of the game play. This is an unlocked frame rate. All it means is if it's running faster is you get more frames per second in the second that goes by. Maybe you see 24 frames, maybe you see 60 frames, but it still takes a second in game to be able to present those frames onto the screen. But as I just mentioned, as we go up the stairs, you can see we're basically at 58 frames per second, 59. And then when those light beams come in, an effect, that's when the frame rate drops down because that's pushing the hardware harder than it normally would again. So when you see those dips, it's going to be either because there's an effect on screen that takes more graphical processing power, or there's just more on screen geometry wise in general, and that's going to take more for it to actually display. But Ezra Mumbo here running around, he's got a nice particle effect on the end of his wand. And now we're just going to be talking about how it feels again as we run back down the stairs. You can see when we're not looking at that window, it is faster. When we go by that window, it slows down slightly. And then the minute that light effect is gone again, the speed comes right back up to where it needs to be. And as they run up these stairs here, the frame rate counter is on the screen. It is 30 frames per second. That's just because there's a lot going on. But the end result of all of this is as follows. No matter what frame rate you're getting in Banjo-Tooie on the Turbo Core with the 60 frame per second patch, it's going to be better than if you didn't have the patch, and it's going to be better if you didn't have the Turbo Core. We're basically stacking improvements one on top of another, and that is why we can run around this room right here. It'll lock 60 frames per second, and even if we let off all these particle effects and spin around, it still stays locked to 60, and that is just the patch and the turbo core doing its job. So if you want to play Banjo-Tooie, the best way to do it is on the Turbo Core with the patch. This is just absolutely amazing. The level of graphical fidelity, the level of smoothness and detail that we're getting out of Banjo-Tooie on the Turbo Core with the patch is better than I've ever seen this game run on real hardware. And it takes it into that infinitely playable category, and I'm going to start my playthrough right after I'm done with this voiceover. And if you want to see any more Turbo Tests, recommend some stuff down below, but otherwise we're done and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.